Pagbabalik tanaw mula kay Maria Cecilia Ongshako Valenya, dating estudyante ng Yumao at dating kasapi ng Philippine Madrigal Singers. Good morning to everyone. When Mr. Alfred Samonte called on Thursday to say, if I could give a eulogy, I was very hesitant. Naku, Alfred, why me? I have very shallow tears. But deep inside, my conscience dictated that I have, that I have to say something about Tita Andy. Wag lang sad. Anyways, there was no sad memories with her. Line was choppy. All I could hear from Alfred was, Mambetch, mambetch, balik tanaw po, balik tanaw. Okay na ho, ah, okay. Okay, I said. Balik tanaw. Professor Ang Shako, my mother, and Professor Andrea Veneracion were colleagues at the UP College of Music. Professor Veneracion was with the voice department, while my mother was with the piano department. Tita Andy calls my mom Imelda. Nahahabaan yata, so she would call her I.O. My mom calls Professor Veneracion Andy, or O.A. I always thought that O.A. stood for overacting. Hindi naman pala. Tita Andy was her teacher in voice, too. A daughter Didai is my mom's godchild. Doc and Tita Andy are both my godparents at my wedding. It was in the mid-70s that my sisters and I really got to know Tita Andy. There are four of us siblings, all girls. We were studying at a private school in San Juan Metro, Manila. It was Tita Andy who suggested to my mom to transfer us to UP. A veil of your privilege as faculty was her advice to mama. So we transferred to UP. We are all named Maria in the family. My father was a devotee of Mama Mary. Kaya lahat kami merong Maria. Nagkataon si mama, Maria din. Siya si Maria Imelda, an original MADS member from 1963 to 1982. Kulang ng isang taon para maging 20 years. Tita and Andy and Mama were drinking partners. <laughs> the eldest among us is Maria Cristina, whose nickname is Milet. She was with the MADS from 1976 to 1982. There were two Milets in the group at that time, and both were in the alto section. So as to avoid confusion, Tita Andy started calling my sister Mileta with a mouth of the ta. There was always a twinkle in Tita Andy's eyes every time she would say my sister's name, Mileta. Magulo kasi yung kapatid ko na yun at natutuwa sa Tita Andy sa kanya. She has a very loud voice, whether singing or talking. I'm the second sibling that was months from 1976 to 1992. But occasionally, I was still sing with the mass till about 2000. I had a one year recess from the mass from 1987 to 1988 for an international schooling at the Indiana School of Music as a Rotary Exchange Scholar. I was so happy and I was so proud of that school. School din kasi siya ng idol kong si Tita Andy. I was still schooling there when I received a letter from the College of Music telling me to come back after my scholarship year and that I have an item at the college waiting. Wow, high level na ito. Magiging colleague ko na si Tita Andy. Tita Andy calls me by my nickname, Betsy. My real name is Maria Cecilia. A third sister, Maria Corazon, or Georgie for short, very briefly trained with the MADS in the early 80s. She realized that she liked dancing more, so she went off to join the Bayanihan Dance Company. And our youngest sister, the fourth in the brood, is Maria Concepcion. Named Nicknap, she was active with the MADS for 10 years. Collectively, we were singing with the group for about 40 years. Even before we became MADS, we were a singing family without a name. Together with our maternal grandmother, we joined the NAMSIA competition for a small ensemble group. It was Tita Andy's idea. We won a place in that competition. Our group's name, Maria Clara. <laughs> and it was Tita Andy who suggested the name. After that, Tita Andy made Bawi the name. Si Tita Andy talaga. Mag-isip na lang kayo ng ibang pangalan. Wag na yon. 
Eventually, we became the Angshako Brothers. Kasi puro daw kami girls. <laughs> Ang cute! If I'm not mistaken, it was also Tita Andy who branded us that name. The name Maria Clara, she would later use to call the female section of the Madrigal Singer. Madrigal Singers with its counterpart, the Harana for the male section. Concerts would always include a portion for the Harana and the Maria Clara, usually in the middle of our program, or as an intermission or respite for us singers. Tita Andy was the best conductor ever. In the mid-70s, most late afternoons, twice or thrice a week, were spent at the College of Music waiting for our mother to finish the rehearsal with the Mads, held in room 219. It was a tiny room which could accommodate around 12 people comfortably. 15 to 20 people, masikip na. My older sister, Simileta, and I would take turns in peeping, literally peeping, if the mats were done rehearsing. It had been like that for around three to four years. Nadidistract na siguro si Tita Andy. Every time he would peep, peep napapatingin siya. Until finally, Tita Andy said, Kayo, pumasok na kayo dito. Umupo na kayo dito at kumanta. Hindi na silip lang silip dyan. Wow! Trainees na kami. Walang audition. Nadala lang siya sa silip-silip. <laughs> Ang galing ni Tita Andy sa rehearsal. Saan ka makakakita ng conductor? Patingin-tingin, patango-tango, counting body language, okay na. At nagkakaintindihan ng lahat, at lahat ay bumabasa ng nota. Member before us said that Tita Andy was very strict. Natatandaan ko she was eating corn during a rehearsal. And then, there was this passage na hindi namin makuha-kuha. We were mostly trainees. Maraming facial expression si Tita Andy. Kapag pataas ang tingin, medyo okay. Parang bahala kayo. Or ano ba yan? Pero kapag pababa at merong kaunting whistling sound, naiinis na yan. So she looked down, whistled, put down the corner of the chair at sinabi, isa-isa. Nakakanervyos naman. Solo agad. <laughs> Read your part. She will not tell you personally that you are singing wrong. One by one, singing will tell you alone kung sino ang mali. She would add to say, mag-aral, practice makes perfect. Nitty-gritty details, she would check. We were trained to sit down properly, sit halfway on the edge of the chair, no slouching, focus on the audience when singing. Ayaw niya ng rolling eyeballs, ako yun. When performing standing up, sa sides lang ang kamay. When we put our hands in front, sinasabi niya, anong tinatakpan niyo? <laughs> our hair should be in pusod and makeup should be done properly. Kulang sa lipstick, kulang sa blush on, kulang sa eye shadow, dagdagan. Short hair became, became a fad in the mid or late 80s. There were, I think, two members who had their hair cut very short. Nagmuka silang mga lalaki. Medyo naiinis si Tita Andy, I don't care what you do to your hair, but be sure you are still in pusod when you perform. <laughs> so, yung mga nagpagupit, merong fake hair, or binabalot nila yung black socks ng hairnet para gawing pusod, at tinatambakan ng buhok ng katakot-takot na spray net. Accessories should be complete. From earrings to tambourine to paineta. Kapag kulang, we have to be creative. One time, there was this member and she forgot her pearl earrings. Walang may dala ng extra. You know what that member did sa takot mapagalitan? She rolled and formed two white paper into two balls. Tinusukan ng safety pins at nilagay niya sa butas ng kanyang tenga. From where Tita Andy was seated, Mukha nga siyang pearl earrings. <laughs> Tita Andy strongly believed that nobody in the group is indispensable. Ang pinakamagandang ehemplo ata dito talaga yung nangyari sa Arezzo. Alam ni alam ni Justice De Leon. Hindi naman niya batch yun. Anyways, gusto ko lang dagdagan na. Then, si Tita Andy tumataas ng boses, pumipilipit. 
I could not anymore decipher audibly what she was saying. Nabuti na lang nandun si Doc to pacify Tita Andy. Andy, 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 tama na Andy, okay na, tama na. So, okay, sinig na niya yung, siguro now I'm allowed to say the names. <laughs> so anyway, that member, uh, sabi ni Tita Andy, ikaw, for I care, umuwi ka, I don't care. Ngayon din, umuwi ka. We were all so nervous kasi ilan na lang kami sa grupo. Mababawasan pa. So Tita, made, Tita Andy made some balancing bago kami mag-compete. Buti na lang nanalo kami ng first prize. Tita Andy was very religious. Tinatanong ko siya, Tita Andy, hindi <clears throat> ka pa ninenervyos para yung competition? Nakaka-stress. Oh, sino nang sabi? Sandasal lang yan at saka hindi nila alam. Marami akong santo sa aking dibdib. Binuksan niya. May nadadagdagan. <laughs> so dami nga nakasabit. <laughs> Tita Andy was a disciplinarian. Kapag sinabing no shopping, dahil merong concert, no shopping. Hmm, merong control, meron discipline. I remember in the late 70s in Hong Kong, she told us not to go out. Concert mamaya, rest lang. Pero the temptation was just too much. Nasa Hong Kong kami. Sarap mag-shopping. Anyways, late afternoon pa naman ng concert, Tita Andy was resting. So we all snuck out. There was the signature shop. Bilang lang yung mga pinapapasok. At sa loob may black drape siya, covering the shop inside para ibang dating. Pagpasok namin, sino nandun? Si Tita Andy. Ho, 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 what to do, what to do? She looked at all of us. Balik sa kwarto. And we got the sermon of our lives. Tita Andy would always remind us to always make mistakes with conviction. We are not to discuss our mistakes, especially after a concert. Nagagalit siya kapag pinag-uusapan. Magkamali ko magkamali, pero huwag magpapahalata. If you do not know the song, you still have to open your mouth. Kaya ang gagaling namin mag-lip-sync. Ang gagaling din ng mads mag-KKA, kanya-kanyang arrangement. Lalo na kapag kulang ang mga boses. Late 80s yata, Korea or Taiwan, we were singing Gabakan by Federizon. Hindi ko naman alam kung sino ang nag-design ng costume namin. May palong kami sa ulo na made of bamboo, yung parang sa saranggola. At meron mga feathers na super colorful. Para kaming pick-up. Pick-up na sa ulo ang tail. Iba ang setup ng stage. Ang choir sa taas ng loft facing the audience ang kanta. Si ang conductor ay nasa center stage sa baba. Pareho kaming naka-spotlight. Ang alam ko, we were to start from the humming and soft part of the song. But when Tita Andy raised her hands to gesture a strong back and entrance, which is the third part of the piece, I knew something was wrong. So, tinuloy pa rin niya, pagsak siyang ganyan. Ang entrance namin, pianisin mo. <laughs> Hindi siya kumura, parang walang nangyayari. Ang sabi lang niya, Oh, you should have seen our headgears, the feather or quivery. <laughs> Another unforgettable experience. We were singing at the Coconut Palace for a very important personality. It was his birthday. He was in a wheelchair and he was 90 plus years old. He was positioned at the front row so he could hear us sing. Mga about two meters away from us. We took a bow. Tita Andy said, Saranggola ni Pepe. Matayog ang lipad ng saranggola ni Pepe. Tapos na-realize ata niya yung mga susunod na lyrics. Habi niya, Wala, kumanta pa niya ng mga members. Matayog ang pangarap ng matandang bingi. The Harang Saga. It was actually uh, Tita Andy who taught us how to harang unknowingly. Harang became a popular term with the Mads kasi ito yung mga kanta namin na under the table. 
na hindi alam ni Tita Andy. For the simple reason na only a few singers are needed. In the early 80s, the Mass together with the Bayanihan had dinner show engagements at the Folk Arts Theater during weekends. It was an experimental thing. There were around six to eight singers from the Mads who would sing from table to table, after which the Bayanihan show would start during dessert time. Later on, we were transferred to the Manila Hotel Ballroom with the same setup. It became an everyday show. This helped build up our confidence singing in front of a live audience of locals and foreigners. The, per the best part was that we were paid. Binigyan kami ng sideline ni Tita Andy. So we had pocket money. Occasionally, we get invitations from friends and other people to sing at weddings, birthday, etc. Minsan talagang hindi na alam ni Tita Andy, naging harang na ng yan. Kaya nga ma, one time, there was this incident that four of us were invited to sing in an international boxing match at the Araneta. <laughs> it was televised. <laughs> we were to sing the national anthem of the Philippines. Let us all rise for the national anthem of the Philippines to be sung by the UP Madrigal singers. <laughs> Aapat lang kami. We thought, Buti na lang nasa likod namin ang camera. Unfortunately, Tita Andy was watching on TV. <laughs> the next time we saw Tita Andy, she asked, Who among you sang during the boxing match? Walang sumasagot. Buti pa, she said, Umami na. Kilala ko ang mga pwet nyo. <laughs> Betsy, isa ka na doon. <laughs> Sabi niya, it's okay to harang. Kaya lang, you are carrying the magical singer's name. Ayaw ko that you are making bubus or hindi kayo nababayaran ng tama. Tama naman. Over time, dumarami ng dumarami ang singing engagements ng MADS. Sometimes, you had to split into two groups, even three, to accommodate the events. Nalilito na rin si Tita Andy. There were occasions na magulo ang instructions. Merong kakantahan, patay daw. So lahat kami nakaitim. Pagdating doon, birthday party pala. <laughs> Yung isa, Betsy, mag-solo ka, punta ka sa santuario, kumanta ka, may namatay. Opo, pagdating ko doon, sabi sa nung, nung contact person sa folk arts, Betsy, o oh, asan ang piyasa mo? Eto, sino ba? Ano ba ako ka siya? Uh, renewal of vows. <laughs> Yari, buti na lang may kasama ko, pinauwi ko, kinuha yung isang libro ko ng piyasa. Kaya dapat parang kang Boy Scout kapag kasama mo si Tita Andy. Laging handa. The Big Soup Saga. Completos Recados. From time to time, Tita Andy would prepare for the Mads a Big Soup Party. Masarap na lugaw, kompleto sa sahog, from the trimmings to the toppings, at sabayan mo pa ng tokwa at baboy. It was an influence from the Big Soup Party that we had in Hamburg, Germany in 1981. We were invited by this very famous conductor to a big soup party at his house. We had to make a very, very long walk just to get to the conductor's place. Gutom na gutom na kami. Sabi ni Tita Andy, Kaunting patience. We are having a big soup party. Pagdating doon, nagbubulungan kami. Asa ng soup? <laughs> Ayon in one corner was a table. Meron isang caldero about this height. Merong light crackers on the side and I think may cheese. Sandok kami ng sandok. Wala kaming masandok. <laughs> Meron naman yata, kaunting pinirasong mga sausages at essence ng veggies. Pero, pero swerte na lang talaga kung meron kang masandok. Sa frustration sa Big Soup Party, nagka-idea si Tita Andy na Big Soup Philippine style. Kaya nabuhay ang lugaw. Kompleto ang rekado. She was the best voice teacher and best colleague ever. She was supportive to me as a faculty of her department. She watched me, she watched my first recitalist as a teacher. She asked me why I was seated at the far end of the orchestra section. And Betsy, ba't dyan ka nakaupo? Recite ang estudyante mo. Tita Andy, nahihiya ako. Ang hina ng boses ng estudyante ko. Ano? Anong dyan ang tatay at nanay? Tapos na ang trabaho mo, hayaan muna siya. 
Kaya muna siya mag-recital. Tatapang yan sa second recital niya. Sit where she will see you. Support her. Kaya pala, in all my recitals, dun siya umupo kung saan ko siya nakikita. Ang classic ay, once I saw her at the college, sabi niya, Betsy, how are you? Hi, tita Andy. Inis, inis, ako sa stud, ano, inis na inis ako dito sa estudyante kong ito. Nagkataon, kilala niya yung, yung bata. So, kinuwento ko sa niya kung ano yung nangyari. After a week, nagkita kami ulit sa parking area. Oh, Betsy, kumusta ka na? Okay naman po, Tita Andy. Oh, kumusta yung bata? Okay na kayo? Ah, opo, nag-uusap na po kami. Ah, so nag-uusap na kayo. Okay, kakausapin ko na rin siya. <laughs> ha? <laughs> Natawa talaga ako. Ganyan si Tita Andy, always there for us. She may be at times angry, but I do not recall her harboring grudges against people. She let us be our own person. She influenced and shaped our lives through music, through our experiences and encounters with her. In one of our conversations, she said, Alam mo, Betsy, kapag dumating ang boat, onboard ka na agad. Kasi it may never pass your way again. Lost opportunity yan. Seven and a half years ago, when I learned about Tita Andy's stroke, I was so, so sad. <clears throat> Para ko siyang second mom. Whatever I was doing, wherever I went, magluto, magturo, punta sa bahay, punta sa school, I was most of the time in tears. Matagal ako bago nakamove on. Once I went to visit her, I, I was, I think, not even a minute or two inside her room. Wala akong masabi. Because there was this feeling of nakabara in my throat at umiiyak na ako. Ayaw ko naman makita niya yun. So I hurriedly left. Nagpaalam ako kay Angel. The same feeling was there when she was hospitalized the last time. But when I received the news a little past midnight, the day of her death, I was so sad, but there were no more tears. Salamat. Nakatawid na si Tita Andy. No more pain. No more suffering. She waited for the Mads 50th. And I'm sure she would have wanted to stay on until her birthday. Maybe the boat from heaven was already passing by. Probably, the Lord was telling her, tapos na trabaho mo with flying colors pa. Ito na opportunity for you to board my boat and be with me in paradise. Dito ka na mag-anchor at mag-bow. To Doc, Chiki, Pichi, Angel, and the rest of the family, thank you for sharing a great woman with us. We love you, Tita Andy. Rest in peace.